the question of how faithful um, the depictions of Henry VIII on film have been really depends on your view of Henry VIII. Um, I think the, what's been shown on film shows the debt which, which filmmakers, playwrights have to Hans Holbein and his uh, Whitehall portrait of, of Henry, the one that we all know, you know, the classic image of Henry VIII, which to a greater or lesser extent has been the model for most um, of the uh, portrayals of Henry, uh, from Charles Lawton uh, in 1933 in The Private Life of Henry VIII, right through to Ray Winston um, uh, a couple of years ago uh, in Henry VIII, the, you know, the, the big uh, bluff character, uh, sometimes threatening, sometimes jovial, has been what people have, have made of, of Henry. Um, a lot of people are surprised at how tall Henry was. The, the, I suppose Charles Lawton not being that big, the, the idea of this sort of short, fat, stumpy king uh, you know, eating chicken bones and throwing them around um, has lodged in the popular imagination. More recent portrayals, uh, I think, have been uh, more nuanced, I suppose. Uh, Richard Burton in Anne of the Thousand Days manages to get a, a good combination of the kinds of qualities which contemporary sources identifies the king as having. This spontaneity, this unpredictability, this kind of threatening nature as, as well as a very engaging, charismatic personality. Uh, Robert Shaw's portrayal in A Man for All Seasons opposite Paul Schofield as Sir Thomas More is, is also very good in that respect. Robert Shaw did a beautiful job of capturing the force the brutality, um, the cunning, um, and the sort of larger-than-life characteristics of Henry. What also made that portrayal exceptionally accurate was the was not only Shaw's performance itself, but the way that the people in the film around him reacted. The courtiers who are panicked and are waiting to see the way that Henry will respond to events, like they're landing in the mud. Um, the way that the Moore household is hanging on his every word. That, in many ways, is the best portrayal of Henry on film. Passing fancy, happened to be on the river. Look, mud. <laughs> <laughs> By heaven. More recently, with um, the television uh, production of The Tudors, I, I suppose uh, Jonathan Rhys Meyer's portrayal of him has been good in that it's brought uh, people face to face with the a young Henry which most people don't see. We tend to focus, as I was saying, on, on the older Henry, the Henry of the dissolution, the six wives and all the rest of it. But there was Henry in, in his 20s. Some portrayals have had the virtues of being inaccurate in some way, the vices of being inaccurate in some ways, but accurate in others. A good example of the last is the recent one done by Ray Winston uh, in a s television series of Henry VIII. I think he did a marvelous job of capturing Henry's cruelty, his duplicity, and um, his force, his personality. On the other hand, I think that he lost out in depicting Henry's intellectual qualities, that this was a person who was an avid student of theology. Uh, Ray Winston's Henry is unlikely to have read a book of theology, much less have written one. I think people commented on his accent, you know, that you've got Helen and Bonham Carter doing a merchant ivory and he's giving it the full sort of East End Cockney. Um, and in, fa in fact, actually, they commented on, uh, on the film after making it that they tried to make The Godfather in tights. I mean, that's the point. It was to fit in with a early 21st century idea about what power it was. Um, and true to modern sexual politics, it was very easy on the wives and very hard on Henry. The interesting thing about that film is that it does at least try and explain why Henry was who he was. And perhaps that's the thing about films. Each time, they try and explain this enigma of Henry VIII's psychology in a way that makes sense to the generation watching them.